there. Today we have come to Cleve Abbey, which is in Somerset, and it's the remains of a 13th century abbey or monastery. And we've come here down some very narrow single track Somerset roads, which was a bit hairy, <laughs> I thought, <laughs> especially when we're meeting oncoming traffic. So we went via Tor Cider Farm and had a look there which was good we had some apple juice and homemade, we, really really good homemade stuff. apple juice from the orchard there we've bought some to bring home with us as i needed something after that hairy drive <laughs> um it is a nice place to visit tour cider farm there's uh, farm animals for children to um, pet and to feed they've got a cafe there and obviously you can buy the wares that they have so from Tor Cider Farm we've come down to Cleve Abbey which is about half a mile away so it's not too far and we paid for John and for George to get in and I went in for free as a carer there is disabled parking the normal parkings across the road from the Abbey the disabled parking is actually inside the Abbey grounds so you have to go through the very narrow gate to get in which is interesting it's dog friendly as was the cider farm so you can bring your dogs along so we shall see you inside it tells us here that the abbey was founded between 1186 and 1191 do allow dogs in as you can see we've got Jasper these big old fireplaces here the cloister is the secluded heart of the monastery. It's surrounded by the buildings used daily by the monks. All of them connected by covered alleys running around the four sides. And all the way round. We've got some old steps up here that are a bit uneven, John, because of the age. This was the refectory, which was completely remodelled in the 15th century by Abbot David Juno, who created a magnificent hall just like the Hall of the Second Lord, where the monks gathered for communal meals and guests were entertained. Here is the farmhouse range. These rooms were once part of a farmhouse built in the 17th and 18th centuries after the suppression of the Abbey. farmhouse range and it's got a reset 13th century coffin lid used for the fireplace lintel, similar to the one displayed in the parish church in Dunster. Come up even higher up the twisty staircase and into the upper chamber which it says may have been the bedroom of the abbot himself. century but it's the work of the mid to late, teen, late 15th century. Here we've got some tile designs found 
and this is how they make the tiles. Got some different impressions to make them. That's what you call a fireplace. You can even tell by the original windows. Yeah, they are there, aren't they? The original windows. This is the old and new refectories. So the Abbey monks dined in a hall called a refectory. Two stone refectories are stood in this part of the Abbey. Both are architecturally impressive, but significant differences between them reflect changes in Cistercian values. So the first stone refectory was, bought in, was built in the late 13th century and between 1437 and 1487 Abbot David Junior demolished the building to make way for a magnificent successor running east-west which is where we've been up already. Oh and here we've got an example of 13th century tiled floor that's left down here. How fabulous is that? They built things to last in the 13th century clearly. So the new buildings providing a suitably stable environment to preserve the, the tiles because they're so old. If we go around this way we can see We've got the remains, the foundations of the abbey, latrines, oh, okay. Monastic latrines are almost always found as here at the end of a dormitory. The latrines were upstairs so they could easily be accessed during the night. The main abbey drain lies on the other side of the building, flushed with water diverted from the river Washford. The latrines were immediately above the drain and they were entered via an unusual swinging door in the southeast corner of the dormitory. The large number of latrines may suggest that this aspect of monastic life was as carefully regulated as any other. This was the day room where the monks did their daily work which may have included copying and illuminating manuscripts and light crafts such as mending clothes. A large fireplace here was used in winter. So we're back in the cloister again. And here we've got some more steps going up. Again, they're old. Um, these are called the day stairs. It says originally the day stairs to the dormitory were in the south range, but when that was rearranged by Abbot Junior in the 15th century, they were moved here. So they're quite old stone steps. Dormitory. Thanks to the renewal of the floor and roof, this is one of the few places in the country where it is still possible to visualise a medieval monastic, monastic dormitory. And this is the door to the night stairs, which should take the monks directly down to the church so they didn't have to go outside attend the night service. This originally was the doorway to the latrine lock and it was unusual because it had a swing door so the monks may have gone in one side and come out the other and on the left there's also an opening for a lamp that would have lit both the dormitory and the latrines and there it is so they'd have come out here. So those ruins that we saw outside were actually 
what was left of the latrines. These 15th century stones. So back down to the cloister. This space was the library. And it says it's unusual because it's a whole room rather than just cupboards built into the walls. Books were written by hand and very expensive to produce. This is the collation seat here, which was used by the abbot during a reading held before the evening service of Compline. The reading was often taken from the collations of the 5th century saint, John Cassian, hence the name. And this is the West Cloister Alley. Originally it was open to the Cloister Garden. In the 16th century, Abbot Double built, rebuilt it with glazed windows and gave it an upper floor. So this was the location of the night stairs. And this is the sacristy used to store vestments, books, plate and candlesticks that were used in church services. This here is the east end of the church. So the foundations of the church were uncovered in 1875 and they're in front of us here and the church plan is typical of a small Cistercian Abbey with a small square east end which has housed the high altar and chapels and the, proje and the projecting transepts and the foundations of the monks choir stalls are visible in the east bay of the nave and in the crossing which had a tower above it. We've got the remains of some of the tiles here from the church. And there's the gatehouse that we actually came through because disabled parking is coming through that gatehouse and it's really, really narrow. Hi again, we've had our walk around Cleve Abbey. It's really, really interesting. We were last here three years ago, wasn't it? It was, yes. And they've made some more changes to it. They've done some more restoration. And it's a really interesting place to visit. Some parts of it have disappeared. There's just the foundations remaining. And other parts are still standing as they're being fixed up. And we saw 13th century tiled floor as well, didn't we? Yes, we did. And... It's interesting. Unfortunately, when you take your dog around, if your dog does decide to consecrate, <laughs> desecrate, <laughs> whatever word you want to use, the grounds, um, they do not have disposal facilities for dog poo bags, so you have to take it with you, unfortunately. So we shall be looking for the nearest bin on our way back so that we can dispose of the bag. It's, it's an interesting time looking around, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. And the, the staff um, are friendly when you go in. And they tell you the best way to go around and and what's about and so on. So it's really answer any questions that you have as well. Yep, and answer any questions. Anyway, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. And if you don't already, please hit the subscribe button and you'll never miss one of our weekly uploads again. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye.